This training video is brought to you by K Alliance. K Alliance provides high quality instructor led training videos for desktop, IT, and soft skills. Visit us online at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching, and we hope you learned something new. Real videos, real learning, real success. In this demonstration, we're going to take a look at creating and configuring group policies. Uh, group policy represents configuration management centralized in an Active Directory environment. We really have a great deal of power uh, with group policy, the ability to push out registry-based changes and applications and security settings and just all kinds of things uh, to uh, the different systems. Uh, group policy, as we've talked about, will be applied by users and computers based on their location uh, in, active, in Active Directory. So uh, we've talked about, uh, you know, a number of, of things and uh, we just want to take a look at those now before we get too far. So let's open up Server Manager and we're going to access the Group Policy Management tool from the Tools menu. Okay, this will probably be the only tool that you ever use to manage group policy. Yes, there is a PowerShell command, uh, but, uh, or a PowerShell module, but it's, I don't know, it's, it seems kind of doubtful. Uh, in a lot of cases, you don't really require a whole lot of automation. You may do some reporting uh, on, uh, on the GPOs via PowerShell, which we'll, we'll take a look at some of those commands. So. Uh, this is, we can expand our domains here. If I need to choose multiple domains, such as my child domain, uh, I can choose that. Okay. Although it's not allowing me to select it. Okay, it's not responding there. Uh, and there was, you know, we've had a little bit of an issue communicating with that. So I'm going to stick to just the one domain, uh, just for our examples. Okay. But in a multi-domain environment, even multiple trees uh, and whatnot, you can... Um, uh, you, you, you should be able to do that, all right? We've got a name resolution issue is my guess. Uh, the group policy objects container is listed and we've got the two default policies. The default domain policy is linked to the domain and affects all users and computers. The default domain controllers policy is linked to the domain controllers OU, okay? And that's it, those are the only policies. If you wanna select a policy, uh, you can see where, it's, where the policy's linked, a datum, who it affects, which by default is always the authenticated users. And you can see details about the policy, which is, you know, the status, whether it's enabled, uh, when it was created, what the GUID is, that's how the policy would be identified in the sysvol folder structure. And then on the settings tab, you can generate a report. And it will actually show you, click show all if you want, then it'll show you this is what's in this policy. Okay, so in the domain policy, we've got the password policies and account lockout and Kerberos stuff. And then you just have some general security settings. That, and these are really just defaults. Uh, you know, the, uh, the encrypting or the recovery agent certificate is there because somebody encrypted a file. Okay, so those are, those are defaults. Uh, but that's the ability to see that. And then you also have the delegation, which we'll come back to, but you have a new status tab here in Server 2012, uh, and it shows you kind of the details of this policy, shows you, you know, who has the, uh, who's the baseline domain controller for the, the domain. So if you've got, if you're trying to troubleshoot things, you might go in here. Now with one domain controller in the domain, there's not really anything to look at, but uh, but that is a, uh, a new addition, okay? So if I was going to create group policy objects, the first step would be go to, go to the group policy objects container, right click and say new, okay? We're going to call this corporate desktop restrictions, okay? Uh, we can choose a starter GPO, which kind of serves as a, a template, uh, if, you, if you will, you know? Uh, you'd have to actually create them create the folder that you can then use existing starter GPOs or create your own, but uh, that is uh, an option. I'm not going to do that. So we'll just click corporate desktop restrictions. Now note the other way to create a GPO would be to right click a container and create and link. I don't like doing that because as you start to make changes, they could be in place immediately. I don't want them to be in place immediately. I want to be able to test this out. So I always create them unlinked when you select it, if it's not linked, 
it doesn't apply yet, right? But I'm going to right click and edit and then I can go about the process of, of, you know, actually making changes to this. But then it gives me the ability to test it before I link it anywhere. All right, so this is your typical group policy object. This is the GP, the group policy management editor. So we've got policies and preferences under both users and computers. So the first thing I need to do is figure out exactly, you know, who I'm trying to, what I'm trying to uh, instate. So I'm doing some corporate desktop restrictions. Uh, so I'm going to go down to the Windows settings, security settings section first and look at uh, in local policies and security options. Okay. I'm just going to do an interactive logon. Uh, I don't want to display the last username. Uh, for one, I want a message title. Okay, let's call this property of a datum incorporated. That'll be the title, and then the message text. You know, uh, these computers are property of a datum. Uh, and, you know, so a lot of people will put the, an acceptable use policy. I mean, that can be as long as you want. You can copy and paste something into that. But that's just a title for people uh, logging on. Um, we can, you know, define the number of logins to cache. It's 10 by default, uh, so I'm only going to cache two logins. Okay, so we'll do a couple of those. Those are just standard settings. Then you have your administrative templates. Uh, and so I can control what, you know, what I'm, uh, I can go down at that point and do additional settings. The administrative templates all, I'm going to go down to user, uh, all have the same type of format. When you open them up, they have th three options. Not configured, which doesn't make a change to the client registry. Enabled, which does. It enables the setting and disabled, which also makes a change to the registry, but it disables it. Now, sometimes you have to read the explanation text to, you know, just understand exactly which of those you need to do. Uh, you know, this is hide and disable all items on the desktop, so I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to do that. And I'm going to go into control panel, and I'm going to prohibit access to the control panel in PC settings. Okay, PC settings would be for Windows 8, uh, control panel for Windows, you know, uh, for all versions of the operating system. Okay, now this is, again, this is a corporate desktop restriction. This probably isn't going to apply to everybody. We're going to add that. We'll go into display. Uh, I'm going to modify this, hide the settings tab, prevents them from doing it, or, or even just prevent them from, actually, I don't want to hide the, disable that, and I want to uh, disable the display control panel in its entirety. Okay, uh, the personalization, this is if you want them, you know, if you want to prevent them from doing certain things, uh, so screen savers and mouse and, and those, kinds of, those kinds of things. And we don't want to get too bogged down here because it's very easy to get caught up in all the particulars, you know, what can you do, what can't you do. Uh, honestly, I think as I already said, you can pretty much do everything. You know, if you can find a registry, uh, if you if you can do it via modifying the registry, then it can be done in group policy. Okay. Now, one thing we want to note here is as I'm using these administrative templates, uh, I'm gathering these administrative templates from the local machine, and it says they're retrieved from the local computer. Uh, so, one of the first things, and we're kind of done with this GPO, so we'll, we'll close it. One of the first things that you probably want to do is create a central store uh, of those ADMX files. Okay? The ADMX files are located on each machine in the Windows uh, System 32 uh, policy def, or excuse me, the policy definitions folder directly in the Windows directory. Okay. Inside there, you have all the ADMX files, and then you have the language-specific ADML files. Essentially, we're just going to take that entire folder, and we're going to copy and paste it in the sysvol folder location. Okay. So I'm going to go hit the server. Whoops, I keep doing that. It's not NYC. It is LON. Okay, so hit the, hit the server. The sysvol folder is shared by default. You'll have your domain and you'll have a policies folder. Okay, within the policies folder, we're going to put the policy definitions. All right, now notice what happens when we do that. We go back here and we open up the corporate desktop restrictions 
Now when I expand policies and hover over administrative templates, it says that the ADMX files are retrieved from the central store. Okay, and the benefit to doing that is, uh, the benefit to doing that is that you can just if you have custom ADMX files, you can put them in that central store. They'll be available to all of your, of your GPOs, all right? Okay, so we've got, uh, we've got now a, a policy. It's not linked, but it's got some settings in it, and I'm going to link it up to the, uh, the domain level, okay? Uh, just drag and drop. It's linked to the domain, and now it affects all of our organizational units. Okay, so it means all the computers and all the, the servers and whatnot. And so, you know, I might want to, to make some changes to that. So, for instance, the IT department, by default, is inheriting the default domain policy and the corporate desktop restrictions. Okay, now, I could create a GPO, call it the IT admin GPO. I'm not going to put anything in it, but we notice right away that is the highest in the order of precedence. So the OU GPO will override the domain GPOs. Okay? And it goes in, in that order it's because it's a linked policy object. Well, let's say I wanted to, I don't want to inherit the corporate desktop restrictions. Uh, well, there's no way to just block inheritance for a single policy. So I have to right click the OU and choose to block inheritance. Okay, when I do that, notice both of the policies went away. Well, the default domain policy I do need to apply maybe because it's got some other settings or it's just an example where there were three or four policies up at the domain level and you wanted to block one of them. Well, just take the policies that you didn't want to block and just directly link them, okay? And then they will be in effect. Uh, but the corporate desktop restrictions is not inherited by the IT department. Now, another way of doing that, and this would be more from a, a parent level, okay, so I'm going to delete the link, not the GPO, just the link. From the parent level, you could right click a policy and you could choose to enforce that policy, right? And if you choose to enforce the policy, then what will happen is if I go back here and get a refresh, it not only beats block inheritance, but it also places itself at the top of, uh, it places itself at the top of the list, okay? So it puts itself at the highest level. Uh, the other type of filtering that sometimes gets done, you know, technically both of those are controlling how policies are processed and modifying the default behavior. Another type is, well, you know what? I had corporate desktop restrictions was up here, but it was really for a particular group of, say, users and computers. Okay, so let's, we're going to create that just real quick. New AD group. Uh, group category is going to be, there we go. So it's a security group. The group scope is going to be global, you know, and I'm just going to just give it a name, uh, restricted accounts. Okay, let's call it that. It's a restricted accounts, and so I'm going to, because I have both user and computer settings, eventually we will place the accounts into that group that need this policy. Now, you may be thinking again, wait a minute, I thought we said group policy has nothing to do with groups. It doesn't. The policies that apply to you are based on the location of your user account, your computer account, within the Active Directory hierarchy, the domains, the OUs. They don't, they're not linked directly to groups. However, a group policy object is an object. And every object in Active Directory has an access control list, okay? So group policy objects are no different. In fact, there are two very particular permissions that you need for a GPO to apply to you. We can see that over here. Those permissions are the allow read, to be able to get it from the sysvol folder, and the allow apply group policy. Okay, now that's granted to the authenticated users group by default. So if the policy is linked to a container in the, you know, the container that holds your uh, user account or computer account, then by default it applies, but it technically applies because you have the permission. So if I don't want it to apply to everyone, I've linked it to the domain, but I don't want it to apply to the authenticated users, I only want it to apply to the restricted accounts. And so I add in that group. Now that is what's known as security filtering. 
And, and actually this way, is, it's fairly easy because I can see it right there on the, on the main page there that it's filtered in that way. Yes, it's linked to the domain, but it only is going to apply to, item, to uh, objects within that group. Now, I have to give you a caution here. This should really be the exception rather than the rule. All right, I could just as easily create an OU that had restricted user accounts and computers in it, and then I link the policy directly to that OU, and that's probably a better method. I just, you know, there are times when security filtering is the only way to do it. You know, there are times when I might, you know, need to leave the group in here, but then I have to go and I have to deny somebody uh, the apply group policy permission. So, but again, I would just make sure that those are the uh, essentially, you know, the exception rather than uh, the rule. Okay, so there we've got some basic creation and uh, you know, some of the initial configuration of GPOs. We created GPOs, we modified settings, linked those GPOs so that they would take effect, uh, worked with some of the different filtering options, you know, and now we're, we're ready to move forward. There's certainly more that you can do uh, in the areas of management. But as for right now, that's going to complete this demonstration of creating and configuring group policies. We hope you enjoyed this preview video. Please click on the like button below if you did and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to visit us at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial today. You could learn a lot in a week.